subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PWIP. Export knowledge be, trade be. In the field of exports, it is very mesmerizing to see a ship full of containers. But do you know whether how many containers actually go into uh, this um, you know, ship? There are 20 feet containers, there are 40 feet containers, there is food as a cargo, there is scrap as a cargo, furniture as a cargo, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, things like this, right? So I thought, let's quickly understand as to how does this look like logistically in the port, on the vessel? Well, when we do exports, recently, I think if you've heard of something called as VGM, all the shipping lines want to exactly know what is the exact weight in a container so that they can balance the ship very well, right? So this starts from right from the place where your uh, you know container stuffing happens, you have to do your VGM, your product is declared, weight in the container declares because not everybody has the same weight in the container, even if it is rice, for example. In my experience, I have seen sometimes we have loaded 24 tons in a container and we have also loaded sometimes 27 tons in a container. Well, once this is decided, once the containers are locked and you know delivered into the port, then there is a lot of complexities of operations that happen inside the port, right? Now, for example, tomorrow there is a vessel berthing in. So all those containers where the vessel is going to berth, the containers have to be ready there for you know loading onto the vessel. The cranes are aligned to lift these containers and put it on the vessel. And did you know that a vessel could take anywhere between 10,000 containers to about 25,000 containers? Well, this kind of uh, operations is very, very humongous, right? Well, the time taken, the operational challenges, any accidents, etc., everything has to be taken care of and it has to work like a clockwork. Well, it is very interesting and very nice. So what happens is, where are the 20 feet containers going to be placed in the vessel? Where are the 40 feet containers going to be placed in the vessel? Where are food grade containers going to be placed in the vessel? And very importantly, there are containers which are reefer containers as well, right? Which need cool temperature. If it is food, frozen, or any kind of uh, food uh, items that are going in a container, right? It needs plug point, it needs temperature to be controlled. Now, all of this has to be, you know, very well managed. Otherwise, it could lead to a disaster. A lot of times I spend myself, uh, you know, watching YouTube videos on vessels and exports, etc. And I've seen a lot of videos in which vessels really fail. I've seen vessels crack down in between. I've seen vessels uh, sinking. I've seen con all the containers falling uh, down. And sometimes also there are empty containers that is being shipped from, say, for, for example, from Chennai to Singapore because some shipping line uh, want empty containers to come there for the export, re-export of that country. So there are even empty containers that is going to be on the vessel. So the whole vessel has to be balanced so that it can have a very successful sailing, right? So all this is very interesting to find. And, you know, um, beyond this, there is also um, decision making as to whose containers are going to go there. For example, assume that the uh, vessel that is berthing in it belongs to say one line, right? Uh, a shipping line called one line. But in the port, there are containers of other NVOCCs, other main lines and one line itself. Now, how is the preference going to be set to load these containers onto that vessel? Do you think one line will be biased and say that I'm first going to give priority to all one line containers? Well, I don't know. Could be, could be not. So this kind of decision makings are continuously happening. There are forklifts going in and out. There are trucks moving in and out to go keep the deliver the containers there. There are cranes running in continuous operations and the vessel has a ETA into the port and it has an ETD also, right? So all these things have to be taken care. I thought I'll just take out this topic and leave you with this thought and so that I can come up with another video in which I'll go much deeper into what happens uh, during this container handling at the port and the vessel. I hope you like this content, my friends. Stay tuned so that I can come up with more videos such as this. Thank you.